This is Modern Retrogramming with Plasma. Welcome to Pleiades, the evolution of plasma. Pleiades represents plasma-enhanced interactive development environments. The first thing you may notice is 80 columns is now the default. Plasma has grown to support multiple development environments. Here I will showcase the languages enhanced by Plasma using a standard program, Rod's colors in each. First off is Prodos Basic. The Pleiades editor is used to write the code using indentation and white space to make the program more readable. This doesn't add any features to Prodos Basic, but does improve the maintenance of the code itself. Because the source code is in a text file format, it has to be loaded by way of the exec command. Take note of the display speed of Rod's colors. One thing different with the Prodos basic version versus all the others is this actually calculates in floating point. All others will use 16-bit integer calculations. Take that into consideration. Next up is Lisp. I wrote a Lisp version 1.5 interpreter called Drawl, an attempt at humor to indicate how slow this Lisp is. Drawl incorporates the prog and for loop extensions of Lisp 1.5 to make coding a little more palatable to non-Lisp programmers. Still lots of parentheses though. Some of this video is edited to skip load time at 1 MHz. You will notice performance is slower than basic, but it is Lisp, so there's that. Other examples are included in the Lisp directory to experiment with this historic and interesting language. Following Lisp is probably the most comprehensive development environment Fourth. Fourth is a first-class citizen under Pleiades, which isn't surprising given that many low-level plasma architectural design decisions were influenced by Fourth. Rod's colors written in Fourth looks a little odd. Fourth uses a stack, so parameters are pushed before a function, called a fourth word, is executed. The Pleiades version of Fourth may be unique in that it has two modes. One allows interactive debugging. By passing in a dash D flag, the program can be broken into either programmatically or with Control C, just like BASIC, and interrogated. Variables and code words can be checked for proper evaluation. Here, I print out the value of some variables, after a type, of course, and show the compiled version of the do-rod code. Afterwards, I reset the graphics mode and continue executing the program as if nothing ever happened. Here is a list of all the built-in and compiled words when running Rod's colors. Some are the native fourth words, some provide linkage to the underlying plasma modules, and the others are compiled Rod's colors words. Now I run forth as you would normally. This compiles the fourth source into native plasma bytecodes for a big performance improvement. Unfortunately, this removes the debugging features. Now we head over to the plasma version of Rod's Colors. A new feature of Pleiades 
is the exec file, really just a way to place a long command line sequence into a file to avoid a lot of typing for repetitive tasks, like compiling a plasma file over and over again during development. Preceding the file name with a dot causes the first line of the file to be interpreted as a command. I'll fast forward the compilation, which can take a little bit of time at 1 MHz, but take note of the byte sizes for each compiled section. The newly minted rod module can be executed directly from the command line. Notice how much faster it is than the previous versions. But that's not all. We can adjust the Plasma just-in-time compiler to convert Rod's colors to machine code as it gets run the first time. That's as fast as we're going to get without resorting to assembly. Which brings us to... Coding Pleiades Assembly Language Modules with Edasm. The assembly can be edited with the Pleiades editor, with a caveat. Edasm treats tabs as spaces, so the source code looks compressed as a text file. The Plasma module was defined as an extension to the Edasm relocatable file format, so Edasm can generate Plasma modules directly and get extended features with additional header files. This module isn't Rod's colors, but the skeleton of a Plasma bytecode debugger taking advantage of the Prodos break opcode handler. There is now a debug module that can be used to break into running Plasma code with Control c Again, this is a rudimentary debugger that can be a starting point for a more sophisticated implementation. Typing Control y will continue executing the Plasma code where it was stopped. That wraps up the current state of the Pleiades development environments. Note that Prodos Basic and Edasm were existing languages and tools that work flawlessly under Pleiades. Developing programs with different language tools is all very well and good, but sometimes you just want to copy, delete, or rename a file without resorting to a heavyweight OS tool. Pleiades includes some fundamental file utilities, many that take wildcard file names and operate recursively on subdirectories. Here I'm demonstrating some nonsense file manipulation to show what can be done right from the command line. Creating directories, copying files, renaming files, recursively deleting directories, and cataloging files based on a wildcard. And now for something completely different. I have spent a great deal of time working on a toolkit for the double high-res graphics mode. Many of the bug fixes and updates required for Plasma to fully support this toolkit led to what has become Pleiades. DHGR test is the test harness for running through the basic functionality of the library. Starting off with the double high res line drawer, then image loading, and color get pixel routines. Compiled blit and tile routines next. Then double color line drawing and text. Followed by the different PixBlit methods.
and wrapping up with the pattern fill options. On the GitHub project page, you will find Modern C tools for converting TrueType and 2GS bitmap fonts into the internal font format used by the DHGR toolkit. Here we see anti-aliased fonts drawn over a background. What is a graphics demo without some Star Trek theme? One implementation decision was to forgo double buffering. The implication is that the large screen updates will suffer tearing. I wanted to see how bad it might be with this vertical line test. Not to leave Star Wars fans out, here is a demo suggesting DHGR graphics is so insidious only someone like Darth Vader could come up with it. Moving on to some DHGR utilities. Here is a slideshow displaying some compressed RGB converted DHGR screens. It should be noted that this video is captured from an emulator. For best results, a physical NTSC color monitor should be used. If unavailable, the next best option is running the AppleWin emulator and selecting Color TV as output. Lastly, here is how to convert the raw RGB or PNM files into a DHGR image, greatly sped up for brevity. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Pleiades. Thanks for watching.